Hi, I'm Bruce with Just Ducky Artworks and creator of Daz Castle Greeting Cards that I sell on Amazon and Etsy. I do most of my artwork these days using Blender and uh, including turning some of my 2D cartoon characters into 3D models. In my previous video, I showed how to make geometry no base eyelids for use with procedural stylized cartoon eyes, flat oval eyes, typical of cartoons. In this video, we take the next step. I'm going to show you how to rig procedural eyes to a character using AutoRig Pro. Now this isn't a video on how to use AutoRig Pro, but we'll take you through all the steps you need to do to make this work. But typically rigging programs and rigs, including AutoRig Pro, like to change the direction of eyes by actually rotating the mesh. But since these are procedural eyes, we don't want to do that. So we need to do some tweaks along the way. So let's get started. Okay, I've opened the project file with a character for us to rig. Now you can use your own character or you can uh, download this one. I'll provide information in the, in the uh, description below. And one thing to note is that uh, let's go up here to the material preview in the viewport shading is that Ron's eyes here don't have any materials and that's because they're just temporary. I create some temporary eyes when I do my modeling and then later I'll import the procedural eyes and put them, size them, scale them, put the right angle and uh, put them in the right location to replace those temporary eyes. And we'll do that in just a minute. Right now I'd like to give you a little bit of a roadmap of what we're going to cover in these tutorials. In part one, uh, we'll start by importing the eyes and then setting up the materials so we can prepare them for rigging. In part two, We'll create the uh, Auto Rig Pro rig, and then we'll bind the characters and the eyes to that rig. In part three, we'll then create the procedural eye drivers for the eyeballs. So we'll replace the mesh drivers with the procedural material drivers. Then in part four, we'll create the drivers for the eyelids, and then finish up with the uh, parenting and finalize the, the whole project. Does that sound good? All right, let's get started. All right, first thing we'll do is import the eyes. Now, I'm importing a file that uh, you can obtain on my Blender Market. However, uh, if you've watched my last video, you can create your own eyes from that. You might've already done so. And if you haven't, you you know go ahead and do that. So you have some of your own eyes to work with if you like. Either way, uh, works just fine. So let's go ahead and click File, Append. And this is my uh, current file on the Blender Market 2.1, but keep an eye on that in case it changes. So we'll go to Object, and then we'll, we'll, we'll select the uh, stylized eyeball today. All right, now as you can see, it's uh, rather large. And it's uh, a wafer-looking eyeball, just for like cartoons. But the one you made might not be, uh, might not be a, a, a wafer like that. So I'm gonna come over here to the scale. Now you can get this menu by pressing N. I'm going to drag, click and drag down and just make that all one. So that way we have a round eyeball, which might be the same as your procedural. It doesn't really matter because we'll match that in the end to these temporary eyes up here. All right, so I want to name this eyeball. Rename it to, uh, let's go eyeball.l. So that'll be our left eye. And let's hit Shift D right click to keep it in place and let's rename this one eyeball R and since we have that highlighted let's go ahead and hit G X move it off to the side a little bit all right there we go and uh, next let's go back to uh, that material preview and we can see we have uh, the two eyes there now to work these eyes and control them we click on material down here, material properties, and then you'll see a base color. Click on that little triangle down, and now you'll see some controls for eye rotation. So if we take uh, this lower one, that's the left and the right. And this upper one is up and down. Now notice that they both run together. These are procedural eyes, so we need to separate them with the each having their own material. Otherwise, 
they won't rig correctly and they'll both move together always. So to fix that, let's just uh, highlight the left one. We have I stylized. We're going to click on this little menu over here, this little button to duplicate the material. And let's rename that stylized.l. Click over on the right one and we'll do the same thing. Duplicate that material and then let's rename that one stylized R. So now if we click on the left one, that should move independently. Click on the right one, it too should move independently. So that's what we want. Okay. Next thing we'll do is get ready to rig. To do that, we need to put the eyes right where they belong, up there and where the temporary ones are. Now there's about three different ways of doing that. We'll go back to our solid mode here. The first way, which is the most tedious, is to uh, click on our one of our, our uh, temporary eyes. And it gives all the properties here if you click on the item tab. And we could literally uh, write down, say, x scale is 0 0.042 y scale equals 0 0.005 dot 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 and copy all this information down then click on our eyeball and enter all that information in that takes a while and is not the best way to do it let's do a little easier way with this eyeball selected and that'll be the uh, the item that we want to be the uh, target if you will of the new settings and we want it to copy, so we'll shift, click that left eye, and that will represent our source of the data that we want to copy to this eye. So we'll come over here and look over here at the, click on object properties, a little orange square. And then where you see scale, just hover over it, don't click on it, just hover over the X scale, right click, then go down and click copy all to selected. Boom. So all the scale now matches. Now we have rotation. We only have one, uh, one rotation. That's on the Z. So we can right click and copy single to selected. And then for location, right click and copy all to selected. So now our procedural eye is right where it needs to be, the right scale, the right rotation, and the right location. So at this point, we can come over here, click on the temp eye, and delete that. Method number two, we're going to click on the right eye. Let's go over to the edit, down to preferences. And then if we type in copy, search for copy, you'll see a menu here called copy attributes menu. Let's just check that box. Close that uh, menu. Now let's type, well, let's first select our object, select the source, which is going to be, if I can get in here, that right eye. So select the object, shift select the right eye. Now if we type control C, we can copy scale. Control C again, copy rotation. Control C again, copy location. Now it's right where it wants to be. So we'll Click on the uh, temp eye and delete that. And let's go ahead and just, for the sake of housekeeping, we'll grab those two and move them up into Ron's collection there. So it keeps them all together. Okay. Now, if we go to materials preview, we can see that uh, while well, skin color doesn't quite match, so it looks like he's had a, a real rough day or a rough night, but that's okay. That uh, That'll help us see the eyelids a little better when we do our, our rigging. Now, one more step we want to do before we start the rig uh, is to preserve our vertex groups. Now, Auto Rig Pro uh, usually does a good job of preserving vertex groups that we already have. Now, I'm using some geometry node eyelids on this, and so it might not preserve those. So just to be uh, safe, and since this is a tutorial, I don't want to spend too much time uh, making corrections. We're going to highlight that eye, highlight the vertex groups, and if you see them over here, I'm just going to just 
lock those so they don't go anywhere. All right, then we'll click over here on the right eye and do the same thing, lock those. And while I'm at it, I might as well go ahead and just uh, lock the other items on, on my uh, character. Okay, now he should be ready to start rigging. In the next part, we'll create a rig using Auto Rig Pro and then bind it to the character mesh in the eyes. I hope you enjoyed this and we'll see you in the next video.